morning to everybody. I will wait a few minutes for people to get on the feed. I will wait a few minutes. Good morning to everybody. <coughs> As I am driving to work, we will have this little conversation about what has been happening with the ties of this general that was uh, that he died as an act of retaliation from the government of the United States the Iraqi general uh, Qasim Soleimani from Iran. I will wait for a few people on the feed. How's everybody doing? Good morning. I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News and America's Voice. How's everybody doing? God bless my country of Mexico, my city of Tijuana. God bless everybody in the United States of America. I'm a little late doing this live feed the reason why is that the battery of my car <laughs> it was not starting you know how it is uh, kids leave uh, kids leave something plugged in in your car the whole night and when you wake up in the morning you know the car doesn't start because the battery ran out so I had to get a neighbor to you know uh, help me out to jump start the car so I'm a little late doing this live feed with you uh, Good morning, good morning to everybody. Good morning to my partner, Conservative Anthony. Follow my partner, Conservative Anthony. He's running for Congress in District 16 of El Paso. Uh, follow him. Good morning to everybody. The, this is a serious topic, and I'm just going to scratch the surface with it. It's a serious topic. Why? Because this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about this topic in uh, 20 minutes that I do on my road to work to the office uh, it's a really huge uh, uh, topic it's a delicate subject and also it talks about you know ties with uh, cartels in Mexico and also you know you have to do a lot of reading and investigation but I want to tell the American public the United States citizens uh, that I will do this also in Spanish but I will I want to tell to everybody that Everyone is really surprised right now of the ties between cartels and people of terrorist uh, organizations from the Middle East. I'm going to tell you guys, this has been happening for years. It's not a new thing. It's, it's, it's exactly the same as American people starting to realize now how violent and how uh, terrorists, these cartel organizations, that it's the organized crime, is the organized crime. And this organized crime has a lot to do with hiring and asking military advice from terrorist groups of the Middle East. Yes, it's been happening for years, people. Four years and a lot of Americans just got to realize because of the debt that is worldwide now is a global news of General Qasim Hasim or Qasim Suleimani they are they are putting it right now as he had ties with a cartel that is named Los Zetas Los Zetas is a cartel that it, it was stationed in Tamaulipas an organized crime, a cartel by the name of Las Zetas. This organized crime group was uh, was better known for torturing, uh, extortion, terrorist attacks, beheadings, uh, transportation, kidnappings, and all the crimes that you can imagine. Los Zetas. It was founded by, you know, the one that it was, uh, 
mostly Neon, is Osiel Cárdenas. He's already in the United States government, uh, captured uh, by the United States government. We are going to get more in detail tonight as I am going to do a show. I'm going to do the show about how terrorist groups are tied with the organized crime in Mexico. It's going to be a really interesting show tonight. But this this uh, little live feed that I'm about to do is just to scratch the surface for you guys to realize how serious this is. Uh, General Qasim Soleimani, according to the DEA, uh, Qasim Soleimani uh, tried to hire uh, Los Zetas, uh, you know, this cartel group, back in 2011. And he was paying for a bounty for the head of the Nigerian ambassador in the United States. He was paying a million dollars or a million euros, euros. That is a little bit more than a million dollars. And he was giving up first 10,000 euros, first up in hand. He thought that he was talking to the setas. But according to the DEA, he was talking to DEA agents. So, they were, you know, tying him, they were tying him up with this cartel of Los Zetas. Los Zetas, for everybody to know, is a organized crime cartel slash cartel that got dismantled and disintegrated in 2016. Their allies are some people in Cartel of Tijuana. And this goes with another explanation that I need to tell you. They got allies in the Cartel of Tijuana and also in some other parts. They work, they used to work in a lot of states in our country. I will get that into it later on this afternoon. And also, they had ties with Colombia, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Europe, and Asia. In 2011, El Cartel Los Zetas, this organized crime, was designated by President Barack Obama, no, in 2015, uh, was designated by the, the president of that time, Barack Obama, was designated as a global terrorist group or a global organized crime group. It was designated by that. So in 2015, it got disintegrated, apparently, 2015, 2016. And the last one that it was in charge of Los Zetas, he's already in custody in the United States government. So look at this. This is funny. The, the government and the United States government, if people can help me at what year Obama came into office. If people can help me with that. At what year Obama came into office? This is this is how messed up these Democrats are. This is how messed up these Democrats are. But if he people can help me at what year Obama came into office so I can explain and 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 I can <laughs> basically tie how the president of that time, oh wait. How the president at that time knew about Suleiman, Suleimani, he knew about it. Look, if they knew that Suleimani was planning an attack with the cartel Los Zetas in 2011 to the ambassador of Nigeria in Washington. Why Barack Obama never did anything to stop Suleimani? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Crazy, huh? And in 2015, Barack Obama designated El Cartel Los Zetas, or this organized crime, as a global terrorist group. Mm. It's funny, huh? And you start talking about years and you start talking about statements and you're like 
Well, if Obama was in office in 2008, let me let me get this clear. If Obama was in office in 2008, and the DEA found out in 2011 that Suleimani was planning an attack on the ambassador of, of Nigeria for the behe for the bounty of one million dollars, and he wanted to hire the cartel Los Zetas to put a bounty on Sula on uh, the ambassador of Nigeria. Why he was not in the eye of Barack Obama? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Ah oh, man, this gets getting better and better. And you know, for everybody that is watching, and for everybody that knows, you know, and for everybody that that knows our country, but for everybody that does not know our country, we have had intelligence from Afghanistan military from you know the Middle East in our country training cartel organizations since back in the 90s since back in the 90s just for everybody to know uh, you know one of them was El Cartel Arellano Felix that it was operating that is still operating over here in Tijuana that is these huge speculation that back in the 90s when they were at war with the Sinaloa cartel, one of their, uh, they had intelligence from Afghanistan over here. And also they had Iraqi leaders to fight the other cartel. They were hiring them from the Middle East to come over here and to do the intelligence and to prepare them to got to, how to go to war and do terrorist bombs and attacks. Back in the 90s, so for everybody that is getting surprised about Suleimani having ties with the cartel Los Zetas, yes, it's a reality. A lot of press in Mexico is telling about it, and it's already it's it's it's, it's a fact. Yes, he had ties. Well, he had ties with getting a job done. That it was the bounty. He put a bounty on the head of an ambassador of Nigeria. That I'm will get right into it later on uh later on this afternoon i will get right into it later on this afternoon i will do a show as you know he put a bounty for one million euro euros that is a little bit more than one million dollars and he was trying to hire a cartel that is called los Zetas, that is disintegrated now in 2015 he thought that he was talking to the main guy and he was talking to the DEA. Now, the DEA is dirty, I'm gonna tell you that. Nobody can tell me in the United States that the DEA is clean. The DEA is a dirty business. They do dirty work. So, by this, we know that he tried to hire somebody over here. If Obama was elected in 28, <laughs> and they found out about Suleimani trying to put a bounty on somebody for a million euros in, in Washington, the ambassador of Nigeria, for a million euros in 2011. How come Obama all just waited all the way to 2015 before he came out of office to designate Los Zetas in this organized crime as a global organized crime, crime group? Amazing. Amazing how, you know, there's a lot of people that are saying that, you know, Obama had a lot of ties with the Middle East. I don't study the political uh, uh, parties of the United States. And I don't know the ins and outs of the of politics in the United States. I must admit completely. But the only thing that I can tell you is that for people that they are surprised that Suleimani possibly had ties with the cartel in Mexico. It's not a surprise for me, people. Really, it's not. We have seen, uh, you know, people from the Middle East coming over here and working with the cartels and telling them how to do, you know, terrorist attacks. That is, you know, one of the things that is more in modern culture right now for the cartels, how to do bombings and how to manage kidnappings 
tortures and all that stuff. So, yes, there's been terrorist groups in our country infiltrated with the organized crime. It's a reality. It's been here for years. It's nothing new for us. We already know this. How come Mexico hasn't done anything? A lot of people are going to ask this question. And there's a lot of money involved. Like we have been saying this. It's a multi-billion business. So it's really hard to stop. But the the the, the, the most uh, important and, and most uh, thing that ticks you off a little bit is the dates that I'm talking about. If Obama came into office in 28, and, he, and in 2011, he knew about, uh, he knew about the attempt on the ambassador of Nigeria in Washington. How come he waited to 2015 to designate Los Etas as a global group? You got the difference between President Trump difference between President Trump, you know, he did not wait it almost to the end of his term to say the cartels are terrorist groups. No. <laughs> he, you know, he, not immediately, but he has, after almost after finishing his first term as president, he already called it out that cartels of organized crime over here are terrorist groups. The difference between the president that it was before President Trump, that is Barack Obama. So, question is, did this General Soleimani have ties with the organized crime? Most than likely, yes. If he tried to do something like that, most than likely, yes. And Los Etas, at that particular time, they operated in places in the East Coast. Chicago, Michigan, uh, you know, that were really big in New York. Uh, so, was one of the most, you know, uh, important cartels back in the day. They allied with the Cartel del Golfo and they were fighting the Sinaloa. They had a lot of enemies. They were really violent. But Los Zetas was, you know, a uh, recruiter for the MS 13s, MS 18s. They were really, really violent. Uh, and now, they are. a lot of people are saying, wow, he had ties with the, with the organized crime over there in, in Mexico. It's, <laughs> it's been happening for a lot of years, people. Now, that, you know, things are getting wide in the open and you've got social media and you've got guys like me that, you know, can talk on the phone and, and say a lot of things. And there's a lot of people that do this. You know, it's the information is more out there for everybody to grasp. So, uh, yes, you know, uh, we will do a show later on this afternoon, later on tonight. <clears throat> we will do a show. Excuse me. About you know, we will get we will get right into it. Who was this organized crime? Los Zetas, How you know they were related? Who they were related to? Uh, it's a disintegrated organization. It doesn't exist anymore. But we can have, you know, more information about how uh, people from the Middle East have been, you know, coming over here and training uh, the organized crime. Uh, also, on another subject, another family, this is really sad what is going on. Another family from, uh, from the United States was ambushed and attacked by the organized crime in Tamaulipas. Tamaulipas uh, is designated one of the states to not visit. Uh, also, Nuevo Laredo. Nuevo Laredo is designated as one of the uh, one of the cities to not visit in the whole state of Tamaulipas. Uh, a family around four or five in, uh, that it was in the family was a caravan of cars that they were going back to the United States. This family it was originated from San Luis Potosí. But they were all United States citizens and they lived in Oklahoma. This family got ambushed and attacked by the cartel or the organized crime, killing uh, in a shooting uh, a minor of 13 years old. Now, a lot of people are saying because, you know, there was a, there was a bulletin from uh, the government of the United States saying don't travel to this particular states and cities. Uh, yes, 
you know, they made a mistake to travel, but a lot of people don't understand that all these people travel to their to their homes, you know, probably that's what they're, they used to live. And they risk their lives to go and take money to their families or go and help their families in Mexico. You know, bad decision, it costs a life, but you know, uh, they risk all that to just help their families in Mexico. That is one of the saddest things. Uh, one minor got killed, 13 years old, sad, uh, and it, it keeps happening. It keeps happening, you know. It's it's like the cartel of uh, that, you know, the organized crime that is in Tamaulipas is uh, is on a rampage. Really, it is on a rampage, and it is difficult to control them. Why? Because there's no authority in our country right now, and there's no president that it can basically put the hand down and say, "We're going to do this in this state. We're going to control it." Families keep coming families get keep, keep getting attacked now what happens you know these organized crime guys they see nice little cars with plates from the United States and immediately they think that they're carrying money they want to take their cars they want to take their property they want to take everything that they're having in their car so that's practically you know uh, what they do they kidnap they see if they have a uh, they see if they have interest on them and if they don't you know, they attacked. And this is what has been happening. So a lot of them, you know, that they come to from the United States to Mexico, they have ties with somebody in the organized crime. But in this particular case, I will tell you that it was a family that it was just traveling back to the United States and they got ambushed by, you know, some animals and practically, you know, uh, they killed a minor, 13 years old horrible uh we are going to talk about these two uh particular topics tonight i'm going to do a show tonight to talk about these two topics i must apologize to my my, my uh moderators that i didn't tell them that i was going live i had an issue right here in the morning with the car so apologize for that but uh you know uh we're gonna have a we're gonna have a show tonight to talk about this couple of subjects uh, and we're going to have a show to get specific about the ties about General Suleimani that they're speculating that there are really strong ties with the organized crime. So uh, also we are going to break down who is this organized crime and what atrocious acts they have they have been doing that they can relate to, you know, acts that they can relate exactly how the Middle East works, you know, terrorist attacks. So let's break it down later on tonight as we are going to do a show to uh, to make everybody understand how this has all, you know, ties with each other. Uh, how's everybody doing? I'm Oscar Blue for Border Network News at America's Boys. Good morning to everybody. God bless everybody in the United States of America as they're going through a situation right now uh, a really difficult situation. I told everybody in uh, 2019 that the elections for Donald Trump were not going to be easy on 2020. Uh, and it's showing right now as it's getting uh, more difficult. Uh, uh, the situations that they're putting him into uh, is difficult. But the, the fate of the American uh, citizens and the fate of the world, a lot of people follow Donald Trump as myself. Uh, the fate of the world on him is huge, is huge, like he says. And, you know, a lot of people still, they have the enormous fate that, you know, he's going to get reelected. Uh, God bless everybody. I have to leave to work. I'm late uh, because of the car issue. <laughs> so uh, if people want to donate and contribute to my work, there's my PayPal on my page. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, please uh, stay safe. And always remember, peace and love. Follow my uh, follow my page, Oscar Blue, at YouTube, please. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, always remember, peace and love, everybody, because always, your country's first.